When I came back from the U.S., that was the part that I was most surprised about. Oh. Have you felt about this locker's feelings? How you serve the kyushoku mm -hmm. is really interesting too. Oh. You should be with your child. You are mother now. Be responsible, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. It's me, Shogo, and I have my wife, Harumi. Hi! And also, Tomoko with me. Hello! Alright! So, I actually um, exchanged DMs through Instagram with my viewers, my fellow viewers. And recently, I've been receiving a lot of questions, actually, about living in Japan mm -hmm. and also about raising children. Mm -hmm. It's because Harumi and I, we actually have two beautiful daughters, yeah. um, three years old and just recently turned one year old. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a lot of people have been asking me, if I actually live in Japan, how will my child be raised? Like how will school be and how will life be for them? Yep. And for me, trying to make a, a video directly about child raising in mm -hmm. Japan is a little bit difficult because I grew up, you know, I was born and brought up in Japan. I did live in the US for six years, but most mm -hmm. of my life I spent in Japan. So I don't know what's unique and special about, you know, child raising in Japan, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought it'd be the best way for us is to react to Paulo from Toko's video mm -hmm. we have right here, shocking facts how Japanese kids are raised. Yeah, so we're going to be reacting Wonderful. to their video today. Yeah. Yeah. So as I said earlier, I lived in the US for six years and Harumi mm -hmm. is actually fully Chinese. Mm. She was born and brought up in Japan, but mm -hmm. her parents are both Chinese. Yeah, so we kind of have a unique point of view, I guess, compared mm -hmm. to a Japan born and Japan brought up Japanese person. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll try to let you guys know about our opinions about what they say in this video. In this channel, we'll be reacting videos related to Japanese culture and history. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Let's get started! Alright, then let's get started. Yeah. I'd like to play the video. Yeah. This one is kind of crazy. Japanese, Japanese moms spend always. only two hours away from their baby um, each week. Whereas yes, I think yes, compared yes, to yes. American mothers, they'll spend 24 hours away from their baby. 24. So basically there's like no time ever where the baby is oh, apart from so the mom. Cute. Right? Yeah. At least in, in Japan. Why do you think that is? Well, in Japan, um, babysitters are not so common. I mean, it's That's changing true. like nowadays since like there's more working mothers. But back in the days, I think there's no babysitters. Yeah. And and people expect you, mothers, to almost like suffer and like give everything, you know, for baby mm -hmm. is actually like a good thing. Yeah. They value suffering as a mother. So yeah. basically, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're like a more respected mother. Yeah, like you're yeah. sacrificing for the bit babies and yeah, for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Sacrifice. kind of surprising to us, but you know, mm. times are changing, so that's so, not yeah. necessarily the case for maybe some parents these days, but it's still one of the kind of mindsets mm. that a lot of parents have in Japan. So mm. they explain just two hours mm. a week. Yeah. A week. But yeah. I personally feel two hours is pretty long though. Oh. I'm like, hey, do you have two hours away from Nagi? Well, I guess right now, because you train in Japanese traditional dancing, mm -hmm. so you'll be away from Nagi for I guess an hour and a half-ish. Yeah. But for Hinata, our first daughter, I think you were literally with her all the time. Finally, because it's our second child. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing, it's because I'm always at home now. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that. That's the biggest yeah. thing, exactly. When our second daughter, Nagi, was born, we started YouTube already at that timing. So I was able to be at home and help mm -hmm. out me out. But when Hinata, our first daughter, was born, I was working outside. You know, That's I would leave true. in the morning, come back in the evening, you know, mm -hmm. like a regular job, right? So it was basically impossible for you to leave the house. Yeah. So as um, Maiko-san was saying, mm -hmm. I think babysitting, yeah. Business is getting more common in Japan, but I really feel that not too many people actually use it that much though. Mm. Yeah. As they were explaining, you know, sacrifice, that is the case in Japan. That's how, what should I say, the common sense is mm -hmm. in Japan. If you aren't always with your kids, mm. it really makes you look like a very irresponsible mm. parent, a mm. mother. Mm. Yeah. 
especially I think even if our generations mm -hmm. think that we should be working, women should also be working, mothers should be outside doing other things too, I think our parents yeah. and our grandparents' generations mm. would not be happy about it. Yeah. Aren't you a mother? You should be more responsible. Mm -hmm. You should be with your child. You are a mother now. Be responsible kind mm -hmm. of thing. Because That's how they yeah, were taught they as mothers. Did. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So even if our generations, our mindsets are changing, mm -hmm. our grandparents and parents' generations are not allowing that yet, mm -hmm. I personally mm -hmm. feel. There are actually kind of babysitter mm -hmm. that Kyoto City provide. Oh, the city provides, mm -hmm. okay. But I don't want to do that. I yeah, don't know yeah, why. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you actually, for example, ask a babysitter, mm -hmm. you know, to look after our kids, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure our parents would mm -hmm. not say anything about it. Yeah. But we, like, I guess you mm -hmm. don't want to do that. Yeah, I I just, I don't know. It just, doesn't I feel don't right, want... right? Yeah, 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 I guess. Growing up in Japan, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, if, for example, if we see someone doing it, mm -hmm. that's completely fine, we would think. Yeah, but yeah. we don't want to do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's don't just like common sense, you know, mm -hmm. built up in, uh, in us how, as we were brought up in Japan, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. if the baby is already yeah. grown up, mm -hmm. like for Hinata, mm -hmm. it's totally fine okay. to have someone look after her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for Nagi, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah, you're a little bit scared, mm -hmm. right? I bet, yeah. I think she's too small mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. have babysitter. Yeah, 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 exactly, mm. exactly, yeah. But I think outside of Japan, it's very common to have a babysitter, um, even if their baby is very young, around one year old, mm -hmm. I think. Because 24 hours away from your baby is a pretty long time. Yeah. yeah. So that's about three hours a day, a day? almost. Or even longer than longer that, actually. Than that. Mm. Even longer than three hours a day. That's impossible to imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So the next thing mm -hmm. was, I don't know if it was so much of a shocker, but um, I kind of anticipated it just because of the size mm -hmm. of our apartment. Mm -hmm. But the sleeping arrangements here in Japan mm -hmm. and sleeping in the same room with your baby and with your child. Right. In fact, if you've seen our Day in the Life video with Wolfie, then you know mm. that he sleeps in the same oh, room with us, not bed. in the same bed, but he has a crib right next to our bed. I think 88% oh. of kids between zero and three sleep in the same oh. room with their parents and about like 68, 69% of kids like sleep in the same bed as their parents. Oh. But I mean, it's common oh, for kids bed. to like be in elementary school and still be staying in the same room with their parents mm -hmm. or maybe even the same bed, mm -hmm. right? until yeah. maybe they're like 10 years old or something. That's true. Like for true. me, when I was a kid, uh, our house wasn't that big, but yeah. since we had three kids, mm -hmm. yeah. we used to sleep together in the same room. We call it a kawanoshi. Mm -hmm. We sleep like a true, kawanoshi true, true. means sleep next to each other. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the differences in Japan is they don't have beds, they have food uh, mats. Yeah. Yes. We do too. So mm -hmm. you have kind of like this bedroom mm -hmm. with tatami mats. Mm -hmm. People just lay out their futon yeah. mattresses yeah. and not just like beds just lined up. So right? nice. <laughs> like, like an orphanage. Yeah, it's on the ground, it's on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In our case, like yeah. we moved, my, my parents built a new house when yeah. I was in uh, like early elementary school. That's mm. when I got my room. Mm. So like I think it really depends on the family, mm. like when you exactly, get exactly. your True. own room. But yeah. Usually like it happens in elementary school or junior mm. high at the latest, I think. We'll decide as he gets old, he's um, almost six months now, so we'll mm. see. Mm -mm -mm. So if we can first start from talking about our own situation, mm -mm. we actually, the four of us, with Hinata and also Nagi, the four of us actually sleep in the same room mm -hmm. on a few futon beds. Mm. Yeah, we will be included in the 69%, was it? I oh, think yeah. sleeping on the same bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's how we do it, actually. When I finally got my own room, I think... It was though around the time I went into elementary school too. Mm. Around six, seven years old, um, I think. How was it for you though? I'd be really interested to ask. How is it in China? I think my family, mm -hmm. we slept together in one room, one big room. Okay. With Futong. Oh, and really? Four of us. Oh, really? Really? Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I have four family with mm -hmm. my sister, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four family members. Uh, four family members. Four, yeah, family. four families living <laughs> together, that's a big house. That's, that has to be a really humongous room, by the way. Four family members. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four family members, and you actually slept in the same room. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I asked my mom, mm -hmm. my mother, uh, she said she was really surprised about uh, we slept together. Oh, really? Mm, but 
she said it depends mm -hmm. a situation of each family mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. How, how big their house is their and house. everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in China, there's a big difference with uh, rich and poor. Mm -hmm. So there's so many situations. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah. exactly. And she, she can accept the mm -hmm. Japanese mm -hmm. kind of culture. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah. And I have an image that mm -hmm. um, when I was in like five or sixth grade in elementary school, okay. we often talk about, uh, do you get your own room or kind of, Oh, kind of... talk with your friends yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess that's around the timing. Mm. Yeah, they were talking about junior high school too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think the reason why I was able to have my own room mm -hmm. when I was in the beginning of my elementary school mm -hmm. is because the house that we lived in the U.S. was pretty big. Oh. The house that we rented, you mm -hmm. know. Houses are pretty big in general in the U.S. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't think it's about um, parents really, really want to sleep with their kids. Uh, yeah. I think it's more of because the houses are smaller, and evidently you have no choice <laughs> but to sleep with your parents, mm -hmm. especially when you're younger. When kids are young, your parents are younger, right? And they don't have that much money to live in a big house, so there basically is no choice, I think. That's the problem, I bet. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the third one then. So this one kind of piggybacks off that taking one. A it's taking a bath oh, with your okay. parents, especially mm. the opposite sex mm -hmm. um, and how long they do it here in Japan. So for example, right now we're just giving him a bath oh, separately. Ball. I think at the <laughs> age of maybe three to four months, that's when parents start to take mm. baths with their kids like that oh, young and they'll like soak them in the bath and they'll like go give them up like a mm. proper bath yeah, yeah. together. But this like continues on and the facts show here that all the way up until maybe age 10, 22 percent of oh, moms and sons here. take baths together and then like when they're moms 12, 14 percent all the way up to 15 years old like three mm. percent that's three out of 100 kids yeah. will like take a bath oh. with their mom at 15 years old. Wow. You'd be shocked yeah. as a Japanese as well. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked. Yeah, as a Japanese as oh, okay. well. That happens. Well, this one was kind of weird where it says over 20 years old, 6%. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty shocking. Yeah, so the next one is father and daughter up to eight years old. It says 14% and then to 10 years old, 25% still take baths with their dad. How old were you when you were taking baths with your dad? She's totally <laughs> but I remember like I felt kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. That's the, one of the things. How does that compare to your country? Let me know in the comments. Wow. wow. My first reactions will be really close to what Michael san was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is very common for young kids mm. to take bath together with the opposite sex parents, mm -hmm. right? But taking a look at the data here, 12 years old and like 14. over over 26% and the other one over 27% with dads and daughters this is way too surprising 7 out of 100 daughters mm. take baths together with their dads after turning 20 years or older like how is that possible <laughs> i that's really hard to imagine First of all, like taking mm -hmm. baths together with parents is very common, first of all, if you're younger. If That's you're younger. definitely mm -hmm. common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like for us, the four of us, the fam us, us, we take bath together. Mm. All four of us together, actually. Mm. Yeah. It's because it's much easier for Harumi and I to cooperate <laughs> with all the watching our, our two babies, mm -hmm. you know. And we just take turns and go around, you know. Mm. More uh, efficient, mm. you know, for us. I think there's a common belief in Japan that especially when your ch children are younger, mm -hmm. it's really a good way to communicate with your parents, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. completely with no clothes. You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. There is an idea. Just like when we go to like onsen baths, mm -hmm. with, even with your friends, with their parents, when you don't have any clothes on, you can't hide anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll be more open to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's like things that you can talk about that you can't when you have your clothes on because you're, you know, hiding some parts of you, right? Yeah, so there is this common idea, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, this tradition in Jap Japanese beliefs. Yeah. But still, I think the last time I actually like took a bath together with my mother, the latest would probably be like, I don't know, six, seven years old, early mm, elementary school, around same, there. Same for me. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would be way too weird to take a bath uh. together with my parents after that though. But I guess 10 years old, taking a look at the data here, 10 and 12 are the biggest numbers. So like, I do not want to take a bath with my daughter. <laughs> when she's like 10 years old. 
Oh. I would be embarrassed. Oh. Yeah.、Mm. I think the maximum will be kindergarten.、Mm. Like, I would be like, please don't take a bath <laughs> with me anymore. Even if they want to, I would be、mm. like, no, please don't. That's、mm. not right, you know?、Mm. It'd be a little bit too weird.、Mm. Yeah. Mm. The reason why, first of all, the reason why we take baths with our kids、mm. is simply because they need our help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when they need our help, Opposite sex is not a, such a big problem if they're still small in Japan. Mm, mm, mm. So that's the reason why we do it. If they can wash themselves, why go into the bath together? <laughs> right? Like, there's, what are we going to be doing? Just separately wash your bodies and go into the bath together? Like, why would you do that? True.、Uh, that doesn't make too much sense for me.、Mm. I mean, well, for many people, though, I believe in Japan, it does make sense. Mm. But I don't know. But I think I do recall some friends talking about this that、uh, e- even once they've grown older,、mm-hmm. they would just walk inside the house fully naked with no clothes on. I can't imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Like summertime, like, oh, it's hot. You know, I'm, I don't have any clothes on. You know, there's dad, there's brothers. But they'll be just walking inside the house completely fully naked.、Uh, yeah. And that's like normal <laughs> inside that house. So. So I, strange. Yeah, it would not feel right. I'd be like, whoa. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Bring a towel and come back later. <laughs> That'd be way too weird.、Mm. Yeah, absolutely weird.、Yeah. I asked my mother about、mm. this topic. She said she was really shocked. Oh, really?、Mm. Mm-hmm. To take a bath with opposite sex、mm-hmm. parents. Mm-hmm. And she thinks、mm-hmm. that it's because Japan has the culture of onsen and also、uh, the bath culture. In, yeah. Like, yeah. You Take a bath like into the bathtub like every single day. Exactly, exactly,、mm. exactly, exactly. So you share the bathtub with whole family member, right? Exactly, that's right. Every that's day. Right. So in the past, there were no showers. Mm, mm, mm. Exactly. So when Japanese people would take a bath together as a family,、mm. they would fill up the bathtub with、mm. water and they use that to wash their yeah, bodies. Yeah, 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 they don't、yeah. have like a shower head in a shower.、Mm, yeah.、Mm. So basically, if Once you fill it up and it's warm, right?、Mm. If everyone takes turn one by one, mm, mm, mm. the water is going to turn cold by then. Mm, mm, yeah,、mm. exactly. So that's how the culture itself was mm, born. Mm. And the Onsen culture is born because Japan has a lot of volcanoes, mm, right? Mm. Mm-hmm, exactly, exactly. It's like a combination of all these things mm, together. Mm,、yeah. mm. Mm-hmm. Like in the Totoro, the、mm-hmm. father and two daughters are、oh, yeah. taking exactly, exactly. back together. And I think the big sister,、yep. I think she's in elementary school. I believe so, yeah. Mm, mm, that's right.、Mm. So it's just really common、mm-hmm. like that. Exactly,、mm-hmm. exactly. That's right, that's right. So, this one is kind of more、uh, a general thing、um, when、empathy. they're growing up and how to、mm-hmm. kind of teach them or、oh, correct、oh, your、empathy. child when、mm-hmm. they do something wrong、mm-hmm. um, and just like kind of show them the way. In Japan, typically they show a lot more empathy teaching、mm-hmm. their children. So, for example,、mm-hmm. instead of like saying, Oh, you did something wrong, you're gonna get arrested, it's more of like, How is that gonna make the other kids feel when you take their toys?、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I said, right?、Mm-hmm. So it's、yeah. like more of a show of like, like empathy. Yeah, exactly.、Mm. How I brought up, or how my mother taught、mm. me what I was doing wrong is usually to think of other people's feelings. He's、mm. hurt, right?、Mm, yeah. You don't want to do that.、Mm, or、exactly. let's say I was screaming and then jumping around in like a public place. And then、mm, my mother、mm. would be like, don't bother people. You know, like, not only the feelings, but、yeah. also like you don't want to bother other people. Mm. We mm. say like, <laughs> so it's <laughs> like how it's going to make others feel. So you don't want to kind of disturb. Harmony, you don't、uh, yeah, want to yeah, disturb yeah, yeah. like the peace, everyone is quiet.、Mm-hmm. Always think about others.、Hmm. Life theme. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's not like, oh, you're, you're gonna get arrested, you're, gonna,、no. you're breaking the rules. No,、uh, she never said that. I think it's great to be able to get along yeah, with、great. a group,、mm-hmm. but then at the same time, as someone that's always trying to get along with a group, you kind of、mm-hmm. lose your opinion and your thoughts. That's the thing.、Mm-hmm. That's and、yeah. so you don't <laughs> actually think. On your、mm-hmm. own, you're always、mm-hmm. thinking, okay, what, the, what does the group want to think?、Mm-hmm. Maybe we have to kind of have a mix in there so、Definitely. that、yeah. Especially in our son、yeah. has kind of also, you know,、right. considers、yeah. the group and is empathetic and wants the best for the group, but also has an o- own opinions、mm-hmm. about things. And maybe、Balance、we'll be okay to、important. kind of stick out. Once in a while. Yeah, 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 totally. I think, to be honest, like me growing up, always have to think about others.、Mm-hmm. I have to put others' f e e l i n g before what I want to do.、Mm-hmm. So I never get to do what I want to do.、Yeah. You know what I mean? That sucks. So. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> It's it does like, suck.、Yeah. Oh, I feel bad for her, so I guess I'm not going to do that.、Uh, you know what I'm going to think? That will、uh, like lose your personality or lose your you know,、like、identity. Does it、yeah. make sense? You won't develop your own uniqueness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, me wa ko kake nai, you know, not trying to bother others or destroy the harmony or, or stuff. But personally, when my parents taught me to not do something, they would say, "Hazukashiku nai no ka." More. Aren't you embarrassed? Is what my parents would say more. It's the same concept. You care. You think about others more than what you think. You know. My father, for example, if I was really loud at a restaurant, he would, you know, grab me. He was very abusive, so he would grab me and he would grab my head and force me to look around the restaurant like this. He would say, "Look around you. Is there anyone else as loud as you are? No, you are very, very embarrassing." Yes, that's what my father. Also, my mother wasn't that, you know, abusive, but my mother would say something very similar. Yeah, if I don't have good manners, if I can't say my greetings, you know, table manners and such, she would say, "You are an embarrassment to me, and you're going, you are embarrassing yourself to others." That's the main factor, the reason why I shouldn't do something. It's because I'm an embarrassment, or I'm embarrassing myself. Yeah. So. Yes, at school, teachers will teach you about you know you should care about the other person. What would the other person say? I actually even encountered a situation where the teacher there was a kid that was kicking the locker. Yes, and then the teacher was scolding him and saying that what do you think this locker is thinking? Have you felt about this locker's feelings? No, seriously, have you felt about that situation? No, seriously, that's what they say. And then the boy was apologizing to the locker. It's true. It's true. So it's not just people, but that—that's the basic, you know, the fundamental idea, you know, common sense for Japanese people. It's serious. It's no joke, you know. Yeah, I—I I, I was laughing, but I said that to Hinata before. Yeah, you did too. You did too. Exactly. Exactly. What was it for Hinata though? Like everything, like throw, oh, yeah, if you throw, throw, throw or stomp mm, or you know, mm, kick anything or throw in the the toys. Uh huh. Uh -huh exactly. Exactly. Oh, look at her. She's yeah. crying. The doll there that <laughs> goes through. Yeah. I guess in the U.S., as Paolo-san was saying, mm. I think you would say something much more specific. Mm -hmm. Like you're breaking the rules. You're breaking the laws. You will be arrested. These things are all really specific, right? Mm -hmm. You, as a result, you will be done this, mm. right? But you know. What's the result of being, you know, be angered by a locker, right? <laughs> yeah. There is no re actual result to that, any consequences to that, yeah. But yeah, when in teaching children about what to do and what not to do, empathy is definitely a very key factor of teaching how to behave in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I like the concept of uh -huh. telling the result uh -huh. because my mother yeah. always just said, "Don't do that." Yeah, exactly. There is no reasons to it. Yeah, you just don't do it. That's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Exactly. I love Harumi. How you tell Hinata why she shouldn't do that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's something that we, as parents, you know, even though we are, you know, growing or raising our kids in Japan, that is something that we always keep in mind when we keep teach our kids. Try to be as logical as possible, as rational as possible, and teach them why that's not a good thing. Yeah, like, for example, table manners. As I said, my parents just taught me that it's very embarrassing to make mistakes. Yeah, so I grew up thinking that I should. Should always be careful so that I don't embarrass myself, my parents, you know,、mm. not put dirt on their faces, kind of mm, thing, mm, right? Mm. But for Hinata, I always teach her if she has very bad table manners, you are going to be making some people, you know, feel bad about it, uncomfortable about it, mm, and. Mm. Eating food together with someone is a really important form of communication, right?、Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the world,、mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't want to lose friends or lose、mm -hmm. communication because of that. You you are going to be losing communication or occasions to connect with someone because of it. You know, this is something really concrete, I think.、Mm -hmm. And then just being told that you're an embarrassment.、Right? <laughs> yeah. So I always try to be as specific as yeah, possible. Yeah, you always、mm -hmm. talk about that.、Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I guess. Saying it, explaining it now, I guess this is related to how others would think too. Still, yeah, yeah, it's really 
But it is, I guess, still important. Important, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what manners are for in the mm, first place. Mm, so. mm, mm. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But the, I, we, that's what we try to always keep in mind when mm, we teach our kids. Mm. Yeah. So another interesting thing about mm -hmm. Japanese culture and raising kids is that discipline is not only from it's parents, but it's groups. also from groups. Meaning mm -hmm. that you go to school or you join like clubs mm -hmm. and the discipline is kind of like shared throughout the community. So it's mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. from your parents, which could be a good and bad thing. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, maybe in some cultures you're like no the parents are the ones that are responsible for mm -hmm. the discipline mm -hmm. but in Japan it's kind of like a shared communal thing yeah I feel like That's as right. I grew up mm -hmm. yeah. I was always in the environment that I have follow the rule mm -hmm. that applies at school the club after school school so I think school. if you're in Japan, you're naturally going to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's also interesting is even as a little kid in school, you clean all together. Yeah, I'll be right. walking exactly. by like nurseries and I'll see like kids literally wiping down the entrance of the school. Mm -hmm. and, like, really? Wiping down like, their, like elementary school? Like nursery or something. Nursery, really? Yeah, I feel like I studied in elementary school. Okay. But yeah, but it's good to learn how to be responsible mm, exactly, for your exactly, own. Exactly, yeah. The kids were like, could barely stand and they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Yeah, they were teaching the them how to like wipe the, the windows and like. <laughs> they probably not yeah. like cleaning the house. No, 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 they, they were, they were terrible yeah. at <laughs> cleaning. They, yeah, they're learning. They're learning. So, so cute. They teach them at like, such a young age. I guess to sum it all up, the parents don't have to discipline the child by themselves they have mm. the community they have the schools yeah. they have the circles they have the, like you know the clubs to yeah. help discipline Mm, definitely. Mm, this is really, really true too. Mm. I think one of the biggest ones would definitely be club activities. Bukatsu is mm. so hard to explain in English because in Japan, yes. in Japanese schools, bukatsu is such a really, really important mm -hmm. part of school life, mm. right? Yeah. And especially if you belong to, for example, a sport team, yeah. like, I don't know, soccer or basketball or baseball, the coaches there, the senpai there, mm. You know, would be very, very, very strict. Mm -hmm. Yes, they teach you disciplines for sure. I, my, from my personal experience and my personal image, mm -hmm. I think discipline is definitely taught mainly there in Bukatsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like from our generations, um, it got more and more strict about how to teach children at Bukatsu mm -hmm. and these club activities and such. In the past, club activities like the coaches, teachers, senpai can literally punch and yeah. kick, you know, their kohai, the students, mm. you know, to teach them what's right, what's wrong, mm. you know, in the past. But that became a big problem mm. when mm. we were probably young. In mm. our generations, we mm. have not experienced that. Mm. But until our parents' generations, as a part of educating the students or their juniors, mm. you know, violence, you know, punching, kicking, you know, dragging them around was very, very common. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Super exactly. common. Yeah. And even the teachers during class would, would basically hit, their, hit the kids too. Exactly. Nobita. Exactly. Yeah, like from Doraemon, yeah. right? Exactly. I mean, Doraemon today never don't have those kind of scenes mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the original stories mm. did. Like for kindergarten, for like for Hinata, mm -hmm. she learned a, a lot in the kindergarten. Yeah, that's mm. right. Exactly. Exactly. Like how to use chopsticks, like how to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and how to say greetings, and how to manage your belongings mm -hmm. into your locker, mm -hmm. and how to keep it clean, and everything. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> right, that's right. That's what my mother taught me too. Everything they would do by themselves. Mm -hmm. She was really surprised about that. Mm -hmm. In Japan, kindergarten does teach a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I think also the in mm -hmm. elementary school or the older mm -hmm. age, uh, we have kosoku, right? Yeah, a lot of school rules. Yeah, school rules. Sometimes rules. those go a little bit too far, though. <laughs> That's yeah. true. To go too much, you know. That, mm. There's a lot of problems going on in Japan, too, um. about that, yeah. There's just so many weird rules, too, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's like true. especially regarding hairstyle. Hairstyle. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, you're not allowed to have like like hair that you know reaches your eyebrows, or <laughs> boys aren't allowed to like shave the side of their head, you know, with shorter hair, or like, why? <laughs> Can you give us a reason why that's not good, you know? Mm. It's a kind of hairstyle, you know? Mm. Very outdated, yeah. Mm. Sometimes the disciplines go a little bit too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. So this one was another surprising thing, especially just walking mm -hmm. around in Tokyo, which is like one of massive city, is seeing mm -hmm. kids walk to school 
by themselves mm. and oh, you know, they're small they're, they're probably like five or six years old mm. yeah and I they're see walking them on the trains too. to school by themselves in the city not oh. only are they walking but they're taking the trains mm. oh, right see? they're taking yeah. the buses and they're all by themselves uh, <laughs> shoot wolfie when he's <laughs> five years old we're gonna let him like walk around the city <laughs> all by himself <laughs> when you were growing that up you walk around by young. yourself i did i'm from really countryside and mm -hmm. there's like other big kids in that like close neighborhood. Yeah. So we <laughs> meet up in the morning and then we oh, yeah, all exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, always big it's kids probably, watch out for little that's kids. Probably most common. So yeah. I think yeah. it was pretty safe. In that case, like mm. the kids walked in like as a group. Mm. It wasn't like they were individuals, but I've seen cases where I've seen kids just like yeah, by in themselves. Tokyo, yeah, on the train and bus, yeah. I see them all the time all by themselves. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to see whether or not that's gonna different. be okay for us. But yeah. It seems relatively safe. Like, yeah, it's okay. okay. And I mean, good thing we put that GPS tracker in his. Yeah, where did you put it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, in Kyoto too, if you ride mm. trains, you see kids, very small kids with school uniforms mm -hmm. on, on their own, yeah, standing by the doors, mm -hmm. you know. But I think I've never went outside to go to school on my own. It was school rules when I was in Hiroshima to go always together with your friends. So it could be any oh. friend you like, but they need to be living near your house, like in one, two minute walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I was even younger, again, as Michael-san was explaining, mm -hmm. we the school range a meetup in the morning. So the kids, higher grades, will mm -hmm. go with the lower grades. You know, like, mm -hmm. we'll all go together. Yeah. I personally have never went to school completely on my own at, before, I think. it's. Oh, I think it was really? against the rules. But going home from school, I, I had many times when I went came back from school on my own. I mean, there are sometimes incidents of kids getting kid kidnapped or, you know, terrible incidents in Japan too. I mean, it's not completely safe in mm. Japan either. Mm. Yeah. The children riding a bus or the mm -hmm. train yeah. is going to the city to private school. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. went to the public schools. Public school. Huh? So it's really near your house, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Uh, uh, especially the elementary school. That's right, like, that's right. Walking distance for five minutes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or ten exactly, minutes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, because each district would have their own public school, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if you're like at the very edge of your district, mm -hmm. of your ward, you know, it would still be in walking distance. Mm -hmm, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And at that time, everyone are going to school. Like, so there's so many elementary school uh -huh, students. Exactly, exactly. And also, there's uh, mothers, sometimes fathers, like uh, waving their flags. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. when they cross the road, yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. safety. Usually they're like grandpas and grandmas of the community volunteering, mm -hmm. I think, most of the time, I feel. Uh, that is PTA, I think. Like, oh, I think that would depend on the community. In Hiroshima, yeah. there were volunteer grandparents. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I remember because my mom really don't like communicating with other people. Okay, <laughs> but okay. there are rules that uh -huh. um, their PTA you, mm -hmm. you have to attend, and uh, they have a schedule mm -hmm. and we, whose mom is going to uh, this this place, this place, this and street, this yeah, street. Oh, I actually, yeah, I have that uh, image uh, too. Yeah, yeah. I guess but, it depends on which area. Yeah, yeah. so in uh, the, the, the public school, they mm -hmm. have the mothers that walk watching mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. to go to school like kind of safe i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly exactly yeah just as harumi was saying mm -hmm. the kids that have to go very far away on buses and trains are mm. kids who go to the private schools mm. yeah, in that case there's impossible for you to, you know, go with someone else. Mm. Yeah. And this next one was kind of a pleasant surprise and it's how healthy, healthy kids food. eat here in Japan. Mm. Right? Very um, healthy. <laughs> very, very healthy. Compared to mm. the States. Compared to the States, yeah. I don't know about other countries and what they mm. serve mm. for yeah. lunch. Yeah. yeah. So in Japan, they have Kyushoku. Yeah, there you go. Anyone explain a little bit more about it? So Kyushoku, it's usually served for elementary school and junior high, mm. maybe yeah. school, school? I don't know, maybe not. Like 92% or something? Mm. of the schools oh. are using it so like basically almost all of the schools mm -hmm. are, are using yeah, again, Kyushoku, probably the private right? schools yeah, yeah it's very it. balanced oh. the yeah. menu changes every single day and they have mm. that ayoshi the, yeah. the mm. Mm. nutrition 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 yeah plan everything out for a whole month every month the kyushoku company actually mm. likes the cooks it and serves it yeah so like what exactly what would you have so what you get in kyushoku it's very balanced usually carbs soup 
and yeah. main dish and like side dishes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't, yeah. don't remember and exactly. Ruben but experience. for example, like white rice with like green peas on top yeah. and miso soup with mushroom, so tofu, really? and mm. seaweed in it. Main dish would be hamburger yeah. and mm. side dish oh, would be yeah. like oh, wow. orange, really really nice. yeah. spinach, and That's sesame mm -hmm. and some kind of pickles or something. It wouldn't be the same every day. They would just alternate throughout the week. So you have like yeah. an entire month's like worth mm -hmm. of menu. Right. Yeah, every day and is we get different. Like a paper and, oh, with, and you uh, get schedule mm. and milk. And what's interesting is that the monthly fee for that is about oh, it's so cheap. Yeah, yeah, four thousand. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, monthly. That's monthly. for elementary yes. school, and then about four thousand nine hundred yen yeah. for junior high. So I can yeah, just see you now. I want to get that too. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's because it they're producing meals for ninety two percent of the schools in in Japan, right? Because they make it in volume. Yeah. Yeah. Moms don't have to think of the menu every single day yeah. or like yeah. cook yeah. Like, that the is so convenient that's one of the most convenient but part. that's still something that they do like a lot of moms will still make the bento I know, I know I know I they do but like on weekends or provided. Mm. So yeah, I just remember yeah, in my school we too. had like pizza and <laughs> yeah. like a cheeseburger and tater tots and the cheeseburger tater tots, is like yeah. tater tots? small and it's, not it's kind of delicious. It's trying to kill you. It's trying to kill you. I'm, I'm glad that Wolfie has like healthy options, but if we so, decide nah. to make uh, food for him, then that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think just overall it teaches kids like good food education, right? Uh, so so. And so yeah. they know like, okay, this is oh, not yeah. good food. Yeah, I think at least you think the Kyushoku as a standard, yeah. but he not healthy, but standard spin. food. Like oh, what you oh, we used to have yeah. that one, yeah. Kyushoku, yeah, it's something that every Japanese person have experienced, mm. yeah. But because it's just so normal for us, mm. we, do, we don't actually really think that it's that healthy. You know, it's just really common sense for oh, us, really? yeah, for Kyushoku. It is really healthy. But when we were kids, though, we wouldn't think of it that way, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as parents now, mm. we would really feel very which is, assured about it, you know, mm. because we don't have to worry too much about it, mm. right? Yeah, it's not something that we need to be really concerned about, thanks to the Kyushoku, right? Mm. So I think it's a really good system, mm. yeah. And another thing that I remember is that how you serve the Kyushoku mm -hmm. is really interesting, too. Ah! Yeah, yeah, there will be students who are in charge mm. of, you know, serving Kishiko all the others, <laughs> other students, the classmates in the class, you know. Mm. You have these, uh, the apron and the, <laughs> the hat set that you have to bring to school. White and when you're Exactly, the white, you know, exactly. And you have to put that on if you're, if it's your turn to be the one who serves it you know mm -hmm. exactly so so that was you know really again connected to the cleaning your your own mm -hmm. classroom mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. you're basically responsible of you know serving the food yourselves too mm -hmm. yeah letting the kids do more themselves so i think when i came back from the u.s that was the part that i was most surprised about oh. like i was like cleaning i've heard before mm -hmm. you know from my parents yeah i've seen it in the anime maybe or something but like i was like the kids are serving the kids you know, I was, like, <laughs> I have to do this? Yeah. <laughs> that was really, really shocking yeah. for me. But I guess for people in the US, like from, for Paolo's side, mm -hmm. I guess it is very shocking because, oh. you know, when I was in the US, as he was saying, basically, um, every single day at a cafeteria, mm -hmm. yeah, when I was in Michigan, get with, get this tray, there would always be, every day, every day is cheese pizza. Every day, pepperoni, really? cheese pizza, every really? single day. Every single day. And then oh, it's no. pizza and then something else and there's a dessert. And that's basically it. And you could choose some other things. Mm -hmm. So there are some small vegetables basically just simply stewed. Like mm -hmm. carrots and broccoli are stewed together. Mm -hmm. And then you don't even have to take the vegetables if you don't want to. <laughs> it's, it's not a, you know, it's an option. You, if you don't want vegetables, you don't have to take it, you know. In Japan, kyushoku, you have to eat it, mm. you know the teachers basically enforce you, you know, mm. encourage you to eat everything. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you have like a special situation that you can't eat something, of course you won't be forced to eat anything mm. that you're allergic to or something, yeah. But the teachers will tell you to not leave anything, you know, mm. saying tadakimasu and gosu-sama together, mm. all these, again, related to discipline, mm. yeah. But in the US, there are four to, uh, four to six of these huge garbage cans are like, you're really, really tall, and it will so be tall. like, just like, flip their trays over the garbage cans and throw everything away. Mm. Or they might bring the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> which are also, again, very, very sweet with a lot of sugar, you know. So I guess compared to that, I guess Japanese 
kyushu would seem really really healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you said, yeah. we have to eat it all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I had bad memory. Oh, you have bad <laughs> memories of being forced to eat everything. Okay. I didn't eat very much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, There's yeah. always that one kid <laughs> in class that's yeah. like still eating even though everyone's outside for break yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. recess, but that kid is like, oh, I st- I'm still eating because I eat so slow, you know. <laughs> the classes again will say itadakimasu and gochou sama mm. together, mm. but basically they say gochou sama at the time where generally like 80% of the students mm. or 90% are done eating. Mm, mm, and you say, Let, let's say gochou sama together, gochou sama de shita, and there will always be students still eating. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that kind of stuff happens. So this is like the memories we share, even though we grew up in different places in Japan. Exactly, exactly. And for kindergarten, um, there is kyushoku for kindergarten too, depending yeah, on which school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which school you choose. Like for Hinata, the kindergarten that she used to go to did have kyushoku too. Exactly. And sometimes bento. Mm. Yep, exactly, exactly. So it's very convenient. And for high school, yeah. I think from high school it really, really differs depending on which school you go oh, to. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have any bento mm. or any kyushoku, but mm. we did have a cafeteria though. Mm, mm, that we could just buy like some tickets and we go to the cafeteria, we hand it, we get the food kind of mm, thing. Mm. Yeah. So I think my mother, she did make some bento boxes for me once in a while, but mm. I think 70-80% of the time I ate at the cafeteria, mm, mm, which is mm. very convenient. Yeah. So. Which is really cheap. Yeah, also really, really cheap too because the school supports it. Yeah. yeah. Huge cutlet set menus. Set menus uh-huh. for 400 yen. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's really like calm. one bowl of udon is 120 yen or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So right. cheap. Yeah, it's really, really cheap. Yeah, exactly. And I have the memory when I was in China mm-hmm, for like mm-hmm. a really short period of time. Mm-hmm. I used to go back home once oh. to have lunch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I think in Japan. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, in Japan we don't allow to go out while the school. No, 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 no. Period you're not allowed time, to leave. Right? You're yeah. not allowed to leave the school. Mm-hmm. 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 For the safety, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If in Japan, if kids were allowed to go home mm-hmm. every lunch break, I think it would be very chaotic. <laughs> Yeah. It would be impossible to let everyone come back at the same timing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Alright. I think this last one is oh, last maybe one. Yeah. contest if Wolfie ever watches this Haunt video. You. Is it's not out of the ordinary for kids to grow up with their school. parents and oh. live with them after ah. graduating from high school and college. Very um, common. In fact, 18 to 34 year old single men, about 69% 69? of them still live with their parents. Percent? Really? It's, I mean, it's about 59%. That's not percent. true! It's common. I mean, 34 years wow. old, yeah, you're still living true. with your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you just can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Western countries. Yeah. But in Japan, yeah. it's normal. I wouldn't get surprised oh. if somebody tells me, like, mm. oh, oh really? Parents, you'd be like, oh, okay. But, like, Western person would have a different reaction, right? Yeah. Wolfie, if you're watching this, you might be living with us at 30. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because in Japan it is very common. Uh, okay, so that's the last one. How Japanese kids are raised is the title of this video, right? I mean, 18 to 34 years is supposed to be like an adult already. Yeah. But this is included in the how Japanese Jeez. kids are raised. <laughs> Yeah, because they're acting mm-hmm. like one if they live with their parents, right? But I wouldn't be surprised with the data, though. Oh, really? It would definitely not be surprised mm. with the data. 69 and what was it? 59%, I think. Mm. Yeah, both more than 50 for both mm. genders. Yeah, I think it's not surprising at all. Mm. Yeah, I, I could think up of a lot of friends who live with their parents. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, for example, 18, 34 years, that would include my younger brother. He's 21. That's he's, true. he's living with my mother, so he would be included in 69%, right? And include my sister. Yeah, that's right. Your sister is included in the 59% too. Yeah, so that's true. That's see? true. Yeah, 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 yeah. 18 years old is pretty young. Harumi and I, we're, we were both out of our parents' house when we were both 18, mm, right? Mm. You were in, you were in China, I think? Mm. Yeah, and I was already in Kyoto outside of Hiroshima. Mm, mm. So, so I would be included in 31% who left home mm. when I was 18 years old. Yeah, but this is definitely common. I heard a lot that no. Chika Saiko. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Living with your parents is a paradise. Exactly, because 
Your parents will cook for you,、mm. do house chores for、mm. you. You don't have to pay for rent and、mm. stuff like that. Yeah. I personally, by the way, if you would ask my opinion,、mm. once、um, both Hinata or Nagi, if they turn eighteen, I would love to kick them out of our house. <laughs> I'm like. From, this is completely my personal opinion, but you know, 18 years old. I mean, you're grown up. You should leave the house, be independent, take care of your own self. You know,、mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, like if you're living with your parents because you have a special、um, situation where your parents needs your help、mm-hmm. or you need your parents' help, that's completely fine. That's、mm-hmm. completely understandable. But if you're living with your parents just because you don't want to live on your own because it's you know reluctant or tiresome,、mm-hmm. you know, because I'm tired from work. You know, at least I need at least someone to help me with house chores. I mean, like do that yourself. <laughs> It's possible. Yeah. It's completely possible. You should、mm-hmm. do that yourself.、Mm-hmm. And understand there are financial problems to、mm. it. Japan, you know, the economy. As I made a video before,、mm, cheap mm, Japan.、Mm. The economy is declining for thirty years. I know it's hard, but it's possible though. Mm, mm. Once you start doing it, we were able to do it. Everyone、mm. else will be able to do it too. So for me, it's impossible to have the kids inside the house. Take care of yourself now、mm, and、yeah. come back sometime. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we'd yeah. love to meet you, but you exactly, have to exactly. have your own life. Yeah. Exactly. That's、mm. that's the thing. Yeah,、mm-hmm. you need more experience. Living、mm. on your own, it's harsh. It's hard sometimes,、mm. but that's how it should be. I personally mm. think. Mm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's really funny、mm-hmm. that I often watch the、mm-hmm. TikTok or like、mm-hmm. YouTube shorts, and、yeah. there's so many people like talk talking about what kind of man、uh-huh. you should find for your partner. Okay, okay. And the and there's、uh, one circumstances、uh-huh. is that you shouldn't date with the man living with your parents. Oh,、mm. really? Yeah, you. But、should. that's gonna exclude sixty nine percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you only have a thirty one percent chance of finding、mm, that person. Okay. Because they're not independent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they、mm-hmm. can't do the house tours by themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's true. For a really long time,、mm-hmm. so they wouldn't do it. <laughs>、yeah. well, they can't. They've they never can't done it before.、Do. So they would let you to do. Oh yeah. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Like for me, because I, you know, left my parents' house when I was eighteen, it was really normal for me to take care of myself.、Mm-hmm. You know, make food, wash the dishes,、mm-hmm. wash, you know, do the laundry, clean、mm-hmm. the house. You know, if I don't do it, no one else is going to be doing it for me.、Right? <laughs> yeah. So it was really common for me since we started dating. I obviously did yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah,、mm. exactly. So especially the thing is, if you get used to living、mm. with your parents and not using your money for、mm. daily expenses,、mm. you get used to the routine of using your money that you earn from your company for all of your hobbies and. Clothes and everything, right? You're not used to saving money、mm. for electricity, for water, for mm. gas, mm. for your rent, for your cell phones, <laughs> for your food. Yeah, in your mind, you don't you don't calculate money that、mm. way anymore. Mm. Mm. So once you start living on your own, you use too much money, and you don't have any money left for everything、yeah. else that you need to survive on your own. I would personally say that the people who still try to live with their parents are responsible too, but the parents are also responsible too. Mm, for spoiling、mm. their kids too much, mm, I mm, think. Mm, mm, mm. So then, everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching us reacting to the video. <laughs> There's so many things that we、uh, want to say. We had a lot of fun talking about this too.、Yes. Not just about how we are willing to raise our kids, but、mm-hmm. you know, talking about our memories as kids、mm-hmm. was a lot of fun too. So this was、yeah. really, really enjoyable.、Mm-hmm. And you guys too, if you enjoyed watching this video, it'd be great if you can hit the like button to let us know.、Yeah. And our goal is to achieve one million subscribers by January 2023. So your help would mean a lot. I will see you in our next video where we react to other videos and、uh, things related to Japanese <laughs> culture and history. Thank you、What? so much, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.